what are your uh, guys' thoughts on the Bloomberg article? Like, how do you, how do you feel about this two hundred and seventy thousand within a within a month or so? Uh, Ski was up first. So, I think this is about as dumb of an article as you can have, right? <laughs> so they're pooping all over this. They're telling people, "Oh man, all doom and gloom. The PlayStation just isn't selling." Well, just like the PS5, it didn't really start selling super well until it was in stores. This has to be available in stores. It's not in Target. It's not a Walmart. It's not even on Amazon. You can't go get this headset in any normal way. Your average typical person that's not in the VR bubble has no idea that they have to go to the PlayStation store specifically to buy this headset, right? This headset will not show numbers until Joe and Sally Walmart can walk into a store and buy the thing. I just don't get this mentality. Like everyone is always so excited to make everything like a doom and gloom scenario. But man, we will have no idea what this headset's truly going to sell like until you can go buy it. Right? Like, is yeah. it just me? Yeah. And what's <laughs> funny is that Bloomberg also, I saw on Twitter today, they also put out an article very recently about the Steam Deck and said, hey, Steam Deck has sold a million Steam Decks. It's so successful, blah, blah, blah. And someone on Twitter pointed out that it's been eight months since that came out. So <laughs> at that pace, PlayStation would outperform the Steam Deck. But, you know, to your point, it's like all doom and gloom, apparently, for, for VR. But that did, then got me thinking, Skiva, like, Steam Deck isn't in stores, right? So people are still finding a way to buy that and find it, right? Like, if there's a That's will, there's a kind of thing. That is true. And people are still buying the PSVR too, right? There's still 300,000 of them sold. Right, right, so we still have better than the Steam Deck. <laughs> right, but it's, well, the Steam Deck was marketed. That's the difference. Yeah. There's no marketing for this fucking headset yet, and that's the problem. And I mean, I guess it's not a problem because Sony's going to market it at the end of this year, or I guess starting probably you know soon, right? For the uh, for the end of the year, I believe we'll we're gonna it's gonna turn around by by holiday time. It's a pretty good pretty good chance. Yeah, look, they're still trying to mass produce the PS5, right? They're trying to get these into stores because they know too that this console isn't going to sell and match the PS4's sales until it's in stores because that's where most of them were sold. It's, you know, there there's chip shortages still to this day. Everyone's trying to play catch up and because Xbox is buying chips, Microsoft's buying chips, Meta's buying chips, so everyone's fighting over all these processors and all the silicone. So they got to they have to be able to produce enough to get these things in stores and be able to sell them. It's just limited quantity and very, uh, just not a user, user friendly way to be able to buy these things. Brad sold his yeah. PSVR too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would like for you to weigh in on this. I don't think it's a big deal either. I think you guys kind of hit, hit it right on. Like, uh, I, I think it will grow into its own. Um, I, I still think it needs even more content to convince the current crowd to mm. buy into this expensive piece of hardware. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, I, I think like you guys said that the, the unit numbers for what the scale of the, what they're doing right now is totally acceptable for VR. Yeah, I thought so. Um, when, so like, I didn't know it wasn't available in stores pretty much everywhere. Uh, it's literally an online thing. Did not realize that personally. And it's weird because I remember PSVR being in the shops from day one. Um, 270, I was like, when I read that, I thought, I'm pretty impressed. I thought, that's pretty cool. Um, but I get, if if you haven't had the wow experience of VR, like we said before, this was going to be a problem. An add-on is more expensive than the console, and yet it's probably not even got like 3% of the content available on it either. You know, it's what's the software library of this thing? 40 games you're like okay so i'm buying i mean some people might think it's a little bit experimental you know it might in their right they might think this is a one-off flash in the pan like what you know vr ps you know i don't know i i was just gay but when i read it i kind of thought it was good news um and then other people flash back to the like this guy apparently is a hater anyway um and I think people are getting mixed up with the fact that he is definitely steering this stuff into negativity. Um, but I don't think he's been incorrect yet. Like the very first article was about sales projections. And he basically said sales projections of 2 million are now like being halved or lessened to a certain amount. And, but the way that article was read or shared was like, 
oh my god, like PSVR 2 is going to fail and stuff. And Sony replied, production numbers have continued. Like, we are still going to make 2 million of these regardless. Which had nothing to do with projected numbers. It was a, it was an answer right. to a question that was never quoted. So, I think people need to realise that this guy, it's the way he's speaking. It's what he's saying. His, his whole perspective on this is negative. To say that a system has been out for a month and a week or something, and say it needs a, a price drop when it's hit nearly 300,000 units is insane. I would Plus, like he's that. leaving that's out that's information. The thing. It, that's the thing with this guy. His numbers are always correct, but it isn't the numbers what gets everybody ups, upset. It's the conclusions that he jumps to and the negative light that he always tries to paint Sony in. Um, that that's what gets people upset. And I get it because, you know, uh, I said the same thing last time. The, the VR enthusiast community were easy marks. All someone has to do is say anything negative about our favorite thing. And then everybody loses their shit. And subsequently everybody clicks on the article. So as long as, as long as we react like this, every time we're going to keep seeing this stuff. Yeah. You guys, please stop sharing these articles. If you yes. want to like talk yeah. about it, take a screenshot. Don't allow this stuff to get click throughs because you're feeding the trolls. And when you feed the trolls, it's no bueno screenshot it. Don't link it. Like, you know we can't let this negative stuff pass it's it's just not right it's not accurate like are right, you guys a lot of you guys have kids right gt i know you do wes i know you do right imagine going into like like a parent teacher conference and telling some of the parents there to go get a psvr2 what are they gonna do they can go to the store and then go oh they don't have any that's it right. like they're not that's gonna it. be able to buy it they have no idea how to buy it they're gonna go on amazon and be like, oh, the Amazon doesn't have it. Well, got that's quest. it. They got these, Game over. They got these things called quests uh, on the shelf. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And they play Beat <laughs> Saber. PS have you heard of Beat yeah. Saber? You can get PSVR yeah, one off that shelf. <laughs> Brad, you still got something to add to this? I noticed you were piping up. Two things. One, I agree. Um, by the way, uh, I, this might be a, a hot take, but don't put journalists to a higher standard than YouTubers these days. They're clickbaiting just as much as anyone else, and sometimes they might even be uh, taking free content from YouTubers and clickbaiting and making ad revenue of their hard work. But anyway, um, another thing is uh, uh, while calling them unethical. But anyway, another thing is uh, there was another article that came out recent recently that uh, a bunch of people who are very big in components know how things are priced and everything. They tore down the PSVR 2 and they did a uh, BOM cost prediction or estimation based on the all the pieces and microcontrollers and everything in the PSVR 2. And uh, based on the final BOM, BOM cost, I don't think Sony is too upset by these saleness numbers because they're definitely making a profit for hardware, which is way more healthy <laughs> in a growing market, in my opinion. I, I know some people might disagree than just, you know, taking a loss on every unit. So uh, pick your poison. You could have a somewhat slow but still notable launch and and companies actually make money from software and hardware or you can be the other side where you uh sell at a loss and no one's using your device and putting them in closets or whatever and you know so yeah like yeah. laying off twenty thousand people in six months time yeah good right. point wow <clears throat>